Hello and welcome to World's Finest, the Southgate Media Group's weekly DC Comics review, part of the Channel 52 podcast. I am Phil Parrish, and joining me as always is... <laughs> What's up in the world of comics? <laughs> yeah. Uh, alright, I guess should we... So I guess I'll start with stuff you didn't read. Yeah, I had a light week. Phil had a heavy week. <laughs> heavy. Uh, I know you didn't read Batgirl number seven. No. Um, this one was all right. It had um, she's back in Burnside, and you know things are things are changing. That's like she's like they're gentrifying, and she uh picked a major in school. <laughs> what is it? Library science. Oh. Okay, so they're sticking to that. Mm-hmm. She's gonna be a librarian. Oh, we get a cameo. Library. We get a cameo by Dick Grayson. Oh, is it worth the price of the book though? Uh they they're just having a telephone conversation. Oh. Yeah. Because I don't know, Nightwing's like watch your back because uh guess who she meets in this issue? Who? And who kind of asks her out? The son of the penguin. Oh. Hmm. Mm hmm. He's like, he's like a good-looking blonde, blonde guy. So I'm curious who his mother is. <laughs> is that gonna be like a thing? Or? Um. Well, yeah, I think that they're saying uh, at least for a few issues, I guess. You know how that goes. I'm interested. Yeah, I mean, it's an improvement over uh, all the, uh, you know, her uh, trip to Asia and everything. It. it it's better. It's probably, I'd say, a four. And we didn't read Wonder Woman. No. Nope. Uh, Wonder Woman 15. Well, Wonder Woman's locked up in the loony bin. <laughs> trying to get her head... Really? Well, Steve Trevor kind of hit her there. And she's trying to get her head on straight after, you know, learning everything's a lie. Everything I knew was a lie. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so a lot of this is just, uh, I guess, the evil organization that's behind everything. Uh, Minerva's like, oh, I know them. I kind of worked with them when I was Cheetah. And so now everyone's like, oh, can we trust her now? So a lot, I think it was a lot of setup for like the next arc. Okay. <laughs> or one of the arcs because... Uh, God watch, God watch part one starts next week, and then or in two weeks, and then the truth part two. So, um, they're doing a truth part two, really? Uh, yeah. Like this movie, the truth part one. Well, this issue was the truth part one. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Good. you know what I mean. I'm yeah. Keep doing yeah. it. They're just doing two different arcs again, so. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Are they less confusing? Do you think they're going to be less confusing? Or? Uh, oh, I don't know. Like I said, it, it killed the momentum when they did two arcs, and it was just like, wait, two weeks ago they were, oh, wait, yeah, this is a different story. I don't know. It, I'd say this is probably three three 3.75 for me, so. That's still pretty decent. Yeah. But, I mean, I was giving this book fours and above before. It's DC. They start strong, and then they start getting up to their old tricks. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I know you didn't read Justice League vs. Suicide Squad. <laughs> no. Well, it's the last It's the last issue. Number six. Good. So, <laughs> is, does that mean that the new Justice League is coming out next week, or? Um, I think maybe two weeks. Not this week, but the week after, I think. Okay. Or something like that. It's either... I am going to pick up the first issue of it, even though I didn't like eating it with the <laughs> precursors to it. Yeah, so basically it's everyone taking down Eclipso and... Well, Killer, Killer Frost is instrumental in t taking down Eclipso, that's all I'll say. Well, you know, with, with help from Superman, so... That, oh. uh, you know, there were... So, and then, uh... Killer Frost is like, I'm out, so Batman tells Waller, I'm taking her, you don't have any say in the matter. And they show Batman offering Lobo a job. Oh, and then the end. <laughs> when Waller has uh, Max Lord imprisoned and uh, he says, what, you're going to 
what you're, what, you're gonna put me on your task force act, X, and here's the reveal, Lilith. No, she says, you, your talents would be wasted in Task Force X, but you're perfect for Task Force XI. Dun, dun, dun! That's right, people. <laughs> it's, a, it's a number, not a letter. So, uh, What is Task Force 11? I'd be more interested in Task Force 9. Yeah. Well, that's, that's an interesting take to have on it, I guess. Or but, like, I mean, I mean, it was decent. They bring it up for a reason, obviously. Mm-hmm. Some Howard Porter art. I always like that. It's probably a, a four. Can't we just get Secret Six back already? <laughs> <laughs> you just want Gil Simone back. Yeah, basically. Count but, the issues for our Wade's world. Just count the issues. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... Did you read the uh, the Justice League of America crossover, the Killer Frost one? No, because that was no, this I week. Did not. Okay, well then, luckily I picked it up today. Uh, because it takes place after Justice League vs Suicide Squad. Okay. It's basically like Killer Frost, like last day or two in prison, and Waller trying to teach her that you know she's gonna kill people because of her hunger, and Killer Frost actually resists, and you know it ends with Batman picking her up. So. Oh. Okay. Like I said, I, re I read all. I read all. I picked them up and read all of them except for the Adam that the store didn't have, and I think this was like my favorite one. Okay. Um. <laughs> I'm still not interested in the this, this 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 Justice League. I mean, honestly, I think it's gonna turn out to not be not even as great as the Detroit Justice League. Ooh. Um. I like Detroit Justice League, by the way. I know it had its critics. A lot of people didn't, but. I'm just saying. Yeah, I mean, I've read back issues. I've gone back and read some of them. I mean, it's a, it's not horrible, but I mean, I could see at the time where people were just like, really, but definitely. But uh, no, I'd probably give this one another four. Okay. Well, something I know you didn't read: Blue Beetle number five. Nope. You should be reading Blue Beetle. Did I know. You, I gave you Blue Beetle number one. Did you not like it? No, I read it. I I enjoyed it, but it's just. It's just too many balls. <laughs> I hear you. Okay, so the thing why I think I really, I figured out what itch is scratching is that it's like Captain Marvel, a.k.a. Shazam. It's a kid with superhero powers and that has to, you know what I mean? Yeah. And we don't have a, a Shazam book right now, so it's just like, okay. Yeah. But no, it's still really good storytelling, plus they have Dr. Fate! Like, like it's just, it's on so many levels, so many good interactions. The art is really great. The dialogue's a little simplistic at times, but it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's really fast-paced. Like, we're at part five of the first arc, and it's just been crazy banana shenanigans, and I like that. Is, is it the so, good, do is it, it's the good Dr. Fate, right? Yes, it's the good Dr. Fate. And like I said, hashtag core. Like, I'm a real fan of the old school comic books. So they really found a way to balance that, you know, Jamie thing with everything else. And they're they're walking a really respectful line and they're giving us giving it to us in a new and fresh way. This is very much like if you like Young Justice, you should probably be reading this book. Hmm. Definitely. So um it's, it's a four and a half for me. Okay. Very good. Um you probably didn't read the flash, right? Nope. I didn't think so. The Flash number fifteen. Um, I don't know. This might this might pique your interest. You know, maybe when the arc's done, because the Rogues are back. And Finally. Yeah. Yeah. Captain Cold, Heat Wave, uh, Mirror Master, Weather Wizard, Golden Glider, and like the second Trickster, but we won't hold that against them. No, they actually write the. Uh, I mean, it's good because. There's a twist in here. They actually write the uh, rogues with like they have like half a brain. So <laughs> that's the twist. <laughs> well, no, I, I just well, yeah. I mean, you know, they're not like idiots. They actually like I don't want to give too much away, but they kind of outsmart Flash at one point. Well, he's been acting like Showberry, so that's not that hard. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, slightly. Because there really wasn't much Barry Allen stuff. It was most most of this issue was uh, Flash versus the Rogues. Okay. Um. Look at this. This is probably a uh, solid 4.25. Uh, look at that ad, ad on the back. Powerless. I'm scared. <laughs> oh, God. Who, who's covering that on the Southgate Media Group podcast network, by the way? Do you know? I don't think anyone's called it yet. Why? You want it? 
No, hell no. It's not even Bruce Wayne, it's his cousin. Van, Van Wayne, yeah. <laughs> Although, no, it, it has a group of people that I really like, but the oh, premise yeah. is great. That's what everyone says. They're like, the, they're like, the actors are great, but it's just the premise and... Oh, come on, you don't want to cover it? You know, it only be, what, six episodes? Come on. Oh, God. Well, they did give Constantine 13, so... I don't want to make that commitment, but it just looks... It's, uh, I'm not interested. I was just wondering. Yeah, I'm going to give it a try, but I don't know if I'm even going to make it through. I ain't, I'm on podcast. I'm not going to make it through the pilot. <gasps> we should do live commentary for the pilot. <laughs> <laughs> More to come on uh, Channel 52. <laughs> is that is it a half hour? Yeah, it's a half hour. Okay, I was just say just thirty we'll minutes of that. just thirty minutes of it's a comedy. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just fall asleep in the middle. <laughs> oh my god, I should do that. Oh, you know what? If I did that, Luca would probably come over and be like, "Daddy, wake up, wake up." <laughs> would... So cute. Um, oh. Did you read Teen it's... Titan? Number four, begrudgingly. I'm trying to stick to it. And what did you think? He has to like like the premise for it. Of course he of course they're gonna win. He's not gonna join the League of Assassins for good. Yeah. They're not gonna kill the whole Teen Titan team. Come on. <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> but not this soon. The title's actually doing pretty good, so mm-hmm. but the artwork has continually been the best thing about this book for me. I really don't have a problem with the book, except that I'm just like, ugh, Raza Ghoul again? Yes, yes, yes. It's worn out. Arrow killed it. Literally threw it off a cliff. So, let's move past this. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, mean it, it's more interesting things about Damien than his father and his grandfather. I'm sorry. I mean, to after... Me anyway. Yeah, after the Joker, the last couple of years, it seems like Raza Ghoul's the, you know, villain they overused, you know, over and over and... It's like in the '90s, you barely saw you saw Ra's al Ghul like once or twice. It's just like okay. Yeah, they they don't know the definition of sparingly anymore. It's just mm-hmm. hey, what sells? <laughs> so yeah, but uh, it's a three and a half for me. I just I, I feel like I want to focus more on the team. It's just kind of in this Damien thing, and uh, it needs a little more balance. I think. Yeah. Yeah. But uh. Oh, heads up, at the end of this episode, the Marvelous Review will be Teen Titans number four. Why? <laughs> He's reading the book. Um, well, even, well, I shouldn't give it away, but I already talked to him. But <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> That's interesting, though. I'm surprised he's reading the book. I'm curious to hear his take on it. I don't know. Some books might be getting a cut if, uh, well, this one might be a three ninety nine book event, you know, coming up. So I don't know if it's going to make the cut. If it, if it goes up, well, I do it digitally. So that's... Yeah. <laughs> but uh. I understand. Yeah. What did what did you grade it? A three and a half. Okay. Three point five. Okay. What about you? Um, probably a three point seven five. Okay. It just I don't know. It just seemed like a lot of uh, Damien arguing with people. You know, like Roz and. So what are they gonna do when he joins Super Sons? Like, are they gonna? I don't know. Is he going to be like the Spider-Man or Wolverine? He's going to be on 20 teams. <laughs> oh, God. Ugh. What's next? <laughs> uh, um, hmm. Okay. I, I wanted to get your thoughts on this. Um, What did you think of how Jordan uh, 13? Um, it's losing a little bit of steam for me at this point. Well, it was like a fill It's still it, good, but... It was like a fill-in issue. Yeah. Like, I mean, it was, a, it was a cute enough story, but it was just, it was basically, like, a recap of, like, you know, the, the previous... Yeah, it's, like, setting up for the next arc, and I was just mm-hmm. like, this is not what I paid two ninety nine dollars for. Okay. And, it's, and it's like, these are the green, this is what the Green Lantern Corps is. It's like, oh, yeah, I think we got that already. <laughs> but I don't, I don't want to knock this, because, like, I need them to really take a hold that it's okay to do standalone stories and yes. stop worrying about like, you know, writing for the graphic novel. Like that's what really killed it in the end for uh new 52. Mm-hmm. Um, so I do just want to say that I don't mind it. I prefer it. Yes. So I, I don't want to discourage it, but at the same time it has to be worthwhile. It can't just be a recap. Yes. This, this should, I don't know. I, I, like I said, I enjoyed the story enough, but it should have been just like, 
how getting reacquainted with everybody a one and done. I will say that the cover was I loved it. Oh yeah, the I'm cover. Gonna, I'm gonna frame it. Oh yeah, that is that is awesome. I just, too bad nobody nobody on the cover was really in the issue, but yes. I know. That's what really annoyed me. I was just like, oh, they and switch, they and switch. <laughs> But no, it, it was it was a solid four for me, but I mean, yeah. I'm getting concerned about, you know, them constantly kind of milking us. If you don't have the material to put out a book as many times as you told us you did, then just don't. I prefer quality over quantity anyway. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you don't have the story, just do it once a month. We'll, we'll let you slide. We'll be here. <laughs> exactly. We'll say thank you. Exactly. So that that that's my pro tip of the week for DC. <laughs> it's okay to change your mind about these books if you want. And what you know, we had like another gimmicky book this week. What's that? Deathstroke number eleven. You know, I honestly didn't mind it. No, I'm. I had a feeling that I, might be the way they were gonna go, but you look. just want to grade this and talk about Deathstroke. <laughs> what? <laughs> What what did you think of the creeper? Oh, I liked it. I don't I don't care what anybody says. No, it was good. It would, uh, like I said, it like just I, doesn't fit Deathstroke. Like they've been doing a few things that don't fit Deathstroke, but I think that this was okay. This it wasn't was okay. he. I, liked it. I mean, is this? I mean, wasn't he locked? Don't up? ask about the continuity. <laughs> don't yeah, I know. Either. Just go with the flow. There's no yellow boxes for us. <laughs> But no, I li- I liked it. But yeah, I mean, this was another one and done with a twist. <gasps> you know who should use the creeper next who? season of Arrow? Really? Yeah. The, as a newscast, oh, the black guy could turn out to be Creeper. <laughs> <laughs> the black news guy. Oh yeah. We haven't seen. <gasps> Maybe that's who Prometheus is. Oh. We haven't seen him in forever. <laughs> It just, I don't know, it's just, um, I was going to say, I don't know if it'll work on Arrow, but hey, they have Ragman. <laughs> exactly. So. Mm. But no, did that's we grade Hal Jordan? What? Did we grade Hal Jordan? Yes, we did. We gave it fours. Okay, cool. So, I <laughs> just wanted to make sure. I, just show, I don't know, like, I liked it, but I want to see kind of a return to some more classic Deathstroke. And I mm-hmm. feel like in, in 11 issues, we really haven't had classic Deathstroke. Yeah. But, I mean, Christopher Priest, he's, he's getting around to it. I, I enjoy his take on quite a few characters. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, Deadpool. Mm-hmm. Oh, we'll get there. <laughs> um, I think we had a new artist, though, right? It was uh, Dennis Cohen was the guest star. Yeah. And what, was this, like, PSA month for comic books or something? Because Marvel had done a couple of PSA books, like, with um their Captain Marvel or whoever the heck. With uh, privacy on the internet. Now this is like gun violence in America. And I'm like, um, did I miss a memo? <laughs> <laughs> that That's like, um, okay. We, I thought we say the gun PSA is for Batman. I didn't know. I wasn't expecting that in Deathstroke. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's just like, you're, you want to say, talk about the dangers of guns. I don't know if Deathstroke is, you want him to be your poster boy. It's just like, well, I do have swords. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but yeah, I, I enjoyed this one, so... Yeah, it's probably another four. Definitely. But he's in Chicago, too. Like, I don't know how I, like, uh, how I feel about everybody kind of just traveling and wandering as a nomad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially, like, a real-world city. Like, come on, don't do this to me. <laughs> Especially Chicago. Like, I get why they chose Chicago for the gun violence issue uh-huh. and all those things. But it's just, like... Oh, you're taking me out of the story a little bit. Like, I can't. Like, let's just go to Hub City. I was, that's what I was gonna about to say. Maybe because of the era this week, I was like, yeah, just shoot up Hub City. But other than that, like, you know, I need a little escapism in, mm-hmm. this, in our time of need and our climate and environment here in the States especially. So this is a little uh, unnerving for me. Yeah. Uh, this, hmm. Why does he look like that one guy from um from Marvel though? Like on the cover, he looks like uh, what's the animal guy? Who, who the the creeper looks like? Yeah. Um. You know the the game hunter dude. Oh, Craven. Yeah, Craven. <laughs> on the cover, he kind of looks like Craven a little bit. <laughs> I can see that. 
I was just like, is Wendy Merkel now writing for DC? <laughs> anyway, this is a good solid uh, 4.25. Oh, 4.25. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, so what did you think of Hellblazer number six? It's all, it's, it's, I'm not picking up number seven. I'm done. Oh, really? I won't read the rest of this book until we have to for Newcastle Crew. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, would, it, would, it might have been a decent issue if uh, Constantine had been in it. Right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I get it. Like, they're kind of, like, harkening back to, like, the be- his beginnings or whatever. But I don't think the people that signed up for this particular Hellblazer care at this point. I think it's too soon to bring that in. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I didn't really get the point of why we're doing this. So, um, it's all, it's all, it's, I'm not... I don't know, just, like, get the show on the road already. It's, like, you got Constantine. And, I think we've said this before. You have Constantine, you have Swamp Thing, and it's, like, why am I bored? Why are you not using them? Exactly. Like, this isn't called DC's Mystical Realm. It's freaking Hellblazer. Yeah. Ugh. So, yeah, this is, like, a three for me. Ooh. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm not. I'm going to wait for the trade for the rest of these books. I'll give it a three and a half. They do it. Yeah, I know. I gotta be, you know, I gotta have some discretion here with all these books and money and stuff, so. I know. Hey, we're fans of Constantine, but come on. (laughs) Um, all right, let's go to Action Comics 972. Surprise, surprise, my pick of the week. (gasps) Your pick of the week? Yeah, I enjoyed this story, actually. Because it's finally over! (laughs) Yeah, I know. I knew you were going to say that. (laughs) Um, and it all came out just how we predicted it. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I like the little teaser about what it might mean now that he saved Lex Luthor's life. You know, what does that mean for him? That whole yeah. thing? Yeah. But I mean, that's the thing. To be true to Superman, he, he couldn't let he couldn't have done anything else. Yeah. Well, they could have, but mm-hmm. they didn't. And I'm proud of it. So, Lex hung up the cape. Does that mean we're getting classic Lex back? Hell yeah, that's why I'm so happy. <laughs> you know I am happy. Looks like next issue, uh next next issue, the final days of Clark Kent. So are we gonna get an answer about this other Clark Kent already? We totally are. Like they're totally setting the stage for everything we love about classic Superman. I think that I mean this art kind of dr- drug it out, but basically it was to reset the dynamic between Superman and, and Luke, you know, Lex Luthor. So mm-hmm. like Yes, yes, here it is. And I kind of liked how they, you know, had to deal with their prejudice and they're defending each other. And, it, you know what I mean? Like, they really mm-hmm. kind of... I love the relationship between Superman and Lex Luthor in, in almost any incarnation except for this one. This one has been very um, forced and trite. And I'm glad that it's wrapped up and that we reset it. Like, I'm just so happy. That's why it's my pick of the week. <laughs> mm. And the art was great. So Yeah. So is it it's a straight up five or... Straight up at me. Okay. We're done. Oh, the confetti cannons. Here's a t-shirt gun. <laughs> mm-hmm. Probably give it a four and a half. I could see that. You, you, you like. I, I mean, I was just been so frustrated with this last so Oh yeah. Stuff. I understand. I, I even said I'm like, let's get it over with for it. All right. Well, you want to do my pick of the week, Detective Comics nine forty nine. Yes, let's. This see? is a great book. See, big big uh, numbers don't slow us down. You like the action comics, I like Detective, and they're both 900-some. Yep. Detective Comics, 949, only 51 more to go! <laughs> and next issue is a 38-pager. Uh, oh, it's been a while since we've done that, right? I think so, yeah. Um. So, finally, we're concluding Batwoman Begins, and I, I enjoyed it. I was, Actually, this is a thing that I wish was a little bit longer, but, like, not really, because I'm really here for I can't wait till our book comes out. Yeah, it's it's sometime in February, so. Isn't it, like, the, the, the I think, it, I thought it was uh, the second week. Maybe. I couldn't remember the date, so it, it maybe it's the same week as uh, Justice League of America, I don't know. But, yeah, I'm, I'm I really. I think it is. I'm really hyped for it. The Super Sons is the end of February, right? I think so. But yeah, I'm hyped for this book. Yeah. They really set up some really great stuff. I dude, I love this artwork. And if and if it's like, as good if it's as good as we hope it is, I'm might have to drop Batgirl so I could read Batwoman. I'm yes, I'm really hoping that Batwoman is that title because I just feel so guilty not reading a female like comic. 
Mm-hmm. Like, especially not a DC, a DC one. Like, I'm just like, it's crazy. I'm reading Squirrel Girl, for God's sakes, here, people. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it should be good, because I think uh, James Tynan is right in, in uh, Marguerite Bennett. The same yeah, ones who wrote this at issue. Yeah. And it's going to be, I think this is also to scratch that itch for people who miss Gotham by Midnight. Because mm-hmm. it has that kind of Gotham by Midnight feel, too. So I think I, I expect it to find all kinds of audience. Mm-hmm. But that's another book we can re- recommend, Charlie Esser. Read Batwoman when it comes out. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it, that that's a five for me. It's my pick of the week. Yeah, it was a four point seven five for me. But this 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 book has been consistently good. Oh yeah. So <laughs> I'm just I'm kind of sad to see Batwoman leave, but I'm happy to see her spin off into her own book. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah. I just wonder how it's gonna change the dynamics for all the involved because she was a little more hands on, you know. Than... <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I mean, with Tim Drake missing and her gone, yeah, I wonder how that's going to affect that whole team dynamic. Maybe Batwing's going to step up. I'd be here for that. Yeah. And then once he's well-developed, maybe we could ship him off to Batgirl and make that happen. I thought that's what they were doing. What the what the heck happened to that? <laughs> I, right? I thought I was going crazy. Well, you know, things get dropped and rearranged, so we'll see how that goes. I mean, if she wasn't with Dick Grayson, I was ready for that, but then nothing came of the, Well, they kind of dropped that. Maybe love interests weren't going so well with that title. I would hope so. Yeah, probably. So, yeah, is that it? Did we get everything? Uh, I have one more Batman Beyond number four. Oh, duh. <laughs> so, yay. I, I liked it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Dana knows Dana knows now. Uh, he going yeah, to I feel like I don't want her to know. Like, it's like I'm the kind of fan when it comes out. Like, I, I want her to know now. I'm just like, I don't know. Well, you know, you don't know. She, you know, she might die next issue or something. I was gonna say yeah, nothing good can come of this. Mm-hmm. Dan Jurgis don't care. He likes to kill off characters. I'm doing it. What do you think? Especially of the... with the Joker, the, the the Joker's gang. So it's just kind of like, okay, she knows. That's yeah. too many people that knows. So last hired, first fired. <laughs> yeah, that that cave's getting crowded, especially since they. It's discovered... more crowded than the okay well yeah especially now that they discovered bruce wayne's alive too so it's like yep i don't know kill off well, dana kill off dana have, put him put him with max what did you think of the new suit um it's gonna have to take a time to grow on me i think yeah i like the whole design with the like it's, it's, it's like a mishmash though like I yeah. see elements from you know well, I like the whole thing with the no mouth. I think, like, even, like, Bruce Wayne Batman should have that. It's like, okay, you're <laughs> dressed all in black. You're ready to scare the heck out of people, but they can see it you. It reminds me of Deadpool, though. <laughs> Maybe that's intentional. no mouth thing. Yeah. It looks more menacing. It does. So, what? It's fast-paced, though. I will say, like, for those of you, like, it's only issue four, so I, I want to recommend you guys jump in on this book. It's going to pick up steam. I've heard nothing but good things for the plans for this character, so I'm, like, here for everything about it. Mm-hmm. Just want to throw that out there, because yeah. I know that it has a low reader. So. Hmm. But, yeah, I'd probably give it a 4.75. I gave it a four and a half. So... Is that it? Because that was all of mine. Yep. Uh, there are the books that we didn't read. Let's see. Who's that? Future Quest number nine. Injustice Ground Zero number 17. Commandy Challenge number one. Odyssey of the Amazons number one. You know you know, it's a, it's a it's a bad week for me when I don't pick up a number one or something new. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, six Pack in Dog Welder Hard Traveling Heroes number six. Uh, the trades that came out was Checkmate Volume 1 by Greg Rucka, uh, Green Lanterns Volume 1, Rage Planet, Nightwing Volume 1, Better Than Batman. Of course, we give that a super high thumbs up. Two of them, in fact. Mm-hmm. Um, and Starfire Volume 2, A Matter of Time, I also give that a thumbs up to check those out. Um, if you guys read any of the stuff that did, we didn't read, please send in a review. Let us know why you like these characters and maybe why we should pick it up. So... Uh, yeah, I'll do mine with Charlie, so go ahead and do yours. 
Okay, you guys can find me on Twitter at Lil Hellfire. And also, you can find me on Twitter or any other social media platform at Adventures in FG. Please be sure to check out my website, adventuresinfangirling.com. And please be sure to hit up southgatemediagroup.com to check out the list of our 100 plus podcasts. And it's always growing. We have everything from animator wrestling and everything in between. We also have some cool blogs and a way to donate to help keep this podcast network afloat if you are in the generous mood. All right. Well, thank so, you. Yeah, yes. Awesome. Thank you, ma'am. It's all, always a pleasure. But as for the rest of you, sit back, strap in, because you're getting quality in your face with a review by Mr. Charlie Esser. A marvelous review. Take it away. Hey, everyone. It's that time again. It's time for another marvelous review of a DC book by Mr. Marvel, or should I say Professor Marvel himself, Charlie Esser. And this week is Teen Titans number four. Correct, Charlie? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. This is a this is a good book. Um, a little slow, a little pat. You know, they made it. To, they made it to issue four. Mm-hmm. You know, that's usually that's usually the drop issue. This isn't a, this isn't a drop issue. I'm going to say that this is not a drop issue. Could step it up a bit for issue five. Mm-hmm. It, let me put it this way: if issue five does not resolve this arc, this is a drop issue. Mm. Uh, yeah, because honestly, if you can't do an arc in three issues. It's start, middle, end. That's why it's called an arc. You know, it's, it's, you don't, you don't, um, you know, you can give a tease for the next arc and that's always good in the third issue. Or even like you do that in the first issue, the tease for the next arc is in the first issue. That's the best way to do it. So you get like, oh, here's our first arc. And then, oh, but remember there's that other secondary arc. But this is really only one arc. This is Robin's arc. This is Damian yeah. Wayne's arc. Um, I think that's just that's just the weakness of modern comics is they write for the trade, so they always shoot for at least five or six issues. Mm, well, that's a, that's 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 not good if you're trying. It's great if you want to sell trades, mm-hmm. but I don't know how you can sell a trade if I didn't buy the book. I mean, you know what I, I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's me, but it, it, it a lot of times that's what it seems like to me, both DC and Marvel. So, yeah, no, no, and I'm not, I'm not picking, on, I'm not singling anyone out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, mm-hmm. you know, oh, when yeah. you when you go into these comic books and um and granted two ninety nine, it's not a big it's not a big commitment. It's not like three ninety nine over at Marvel, although that's changing. Um, mm-hmm. and we'll see how many more marvelous re- reviews you get when you go to three ninety nine. I'm going to tell you right now, kids. Um, <laughs> well, the books that come out every two weeks will stay at two ninety nine, I believe. So your Superman will be safe, and then. Well, that's good, but you know, I mean, not for nothing. I've read Superman and dropped Superman, but I've 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 read and dropped a lot of books over the years, you know. Mm-hmm. And DC has been in that mix. I I have picked up a lot of books I've loved, and then at some point I say eh, I don't love this anymore. Mm-hmm. I don't love you anymore, comic book. Mm-hmm. It's time for us to go our separate ways. Um, and I hate doing that. Like. Like Patsy Walker over on uh, the Roundup, as I said, that killed me to break up with ha- Patsy Walker because she's like my comic book wife, you know. It's like we've been together so long, Patsy. Why can't we make this work? And but you know what? She got dropped. Maybe, maybe if she comes back, a new person. Maybe we'll see if we can rekindle it. But man, right now, me and Patsy are done, and that kills me, you know. I'm glad she Hulk's still together because that's like my second cop comic book wife. Don't tell Patsy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moving right along. Okay, so we open up at uh, the Black C- Citadel, Infinity Island, home to the League of Assassins. Seems like an out of way, pl- out of the way place to have your like headquarters. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know you probably want to be like if you're assassins, you want to be like secretive, but still, you know, I'd I'd love for them to go to the business office of the League of Assassins someday. You know, mm-hmm. probably somewhere in Poughkeepsie. You know, <laughs> just yeah. you know, this is the business office of the League of Assassins. You need someone assassinated? Okay, no problem. <laughs> you yeah. know, and then they gotta send the Raven off to fly it over there. You know, because. For whatever reason, even though we're living in, you know, the 21st century, everyone's still very, very close quarters in their uh, assassination and dress. I mean, no one ever, like, you know, love to see, like, an assassin just in jeans and T-shirt someday because it's just comfortable. Completely non sequitur. Anyway, so uh, Damian Wayne has come to sacrifice himself to Raz al Ghul. 
who is now a Batman villain for you Arrow fans. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's a TV show reference. Um, uh, to come to him and say, I'm going to come up myself to the league. And basically, Raz is like, uh, dude, you left. Um, love you. Love you, Damien. You are my favorite grandson, obviously, because I totally have a, a, a man crush on your dad. Um, but we are evil, and you are not being adequately evil. Uh, takes him for a quick tour. They look for at the Mirror of Truth, which doesn't seem to be a Mirror of Truth, just a mirror of whatever the heck you want to see, because... <laughs> Raz al Ghul sees Damien as himself, and Damien sees himself as Batman. And uh, Damien's basically saying, you know, I already told your grandfather I'm here so that you will spare the lives of the Teen Titans. Tell Mara to call off the Demon's Fist. Cancel the hunt. He says, but why would I make such a request when you could do so yourself? And there's Mara, who, okay, not for nothing. So she's got this scar on her face. But one of her eyes is a different color, kind of implying that she's got a cataract in it, meaning that she kind of has lost all depth perception. I know that in comic books, as a two-dimensional art form, you don't lose depth per- per- perception with the loss of an eye, but it's still one of those weird things to me. Um, and they also kind of shove off that it's just a cut on her face. But clearly, the girl's eye is severely damaged. But we'll write that up to the artist. Um... They agree to have the big fight. Meanwhile, Beast Boy, of course, had flown over there as a bug. Now he's a bird, then a dolphin, leading everyone to the Isle of Infinity. Again, not particularly a well-hidden place, apparently. So maybe it works as good as Poughkeepsie for the business office. I don't know. Um, You have a really great scene with Beast Boy where... He's like, I'm not going to lose another Robin. I don't know if he knows that Red Ro- that uh, <laughs> Jason Todd is alive again. I- I'm not sure there. Um, Wait, no, no. Red Rob, um, Red Robin was Tim Drake. Oh, that was Tim Drake. Is he still dead? He's not dead, but everyone thinks he's dead. Oh, okay. well. So, it's, so yeah. basically, we got a whole Phil Coulson on all the Robins. There are no dead Robins right now. Mm-mm. Watch out, Dick Grayson. You're the oldest one. You're the most likely to die. Uh, How dare you. (laughs) I'm just saying, man. I mean, statistically, he's been doing this way longer than everybody else. And everybody else has been dead. So it's like, if you kill him again, it doesn't have the impact. But, like, Dick Grayson's the one guy that you can still kill and go, oh, yeah, okay, that, wow, they killed Dick Grayson. and can't believe that. So I'm going to promise you, (laughs) Phil. Hmm. I mean, he'll come back. Don't worry. Oh, yeah. In the next two years, Dick Grayson will die. No. I promise you. <laughs> Mark my words. In the next two years. Because he's the only Robin left alive. He has to die. Everyone, he's also the oldest Robin. Everyone thought he was dead when he was Grayson. Uh, so, okay. Okay. So, <laughs> so there you go. You got your out. Everyone yeah. thinks he's dead. So do everyone? Does everyone still think he's dead? Who great Dick Grayson? No, no, no. Oh, okay. So no, it's, it's Tim yeah. Drake's turn. Yeah, no. Yeah, Tim Drake. <laughs> he just got back. Why are you killing him so quickly? No, actually, you know, maybe Damien's gonna die again. I don't know. Um. Anyways, and he almost dies here. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, he kind of, the, the, you know. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so. He gives his whole speech. We've got to save Robin. We're not going to lose another Robin. To which Kid Flash is like, sure. Because, you know, Kid Flash is here and he's got, like, literally no connection with any of these people. Hmm? You know, in, 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 to the extent that it's like, gee, you really were kind of, like, reaching for a black superhero to make the Teen Titans Go dynamic work, weren't you? Weren't you? <laughs> you know, I mean... This might have been a good time to bring in Static X. That's all I'm saying. You know, I, although I don't know if he's still a teenager in the in the comic book uh, storyline. I just know I just know him from Static Shock. But yeah, so Wally West is here, and he is um, he is the black guy, which is which he, he's good at it. He's a great superhero. I like him. But yeah, and then we come to Tim Drake again, like. This is like this one thing that keeps on bugging me about this is like every time they're like having. Especially Tim, uh, especially um, Robin fighting Mara, Damien, I think I called him Tim Drake, but having Robin fighting Mara, 
I just think of like midget fights. Um, you know, just this idea of these two people who probably can hurt each other, but they're also like, because like Tim is thirteen, and yes, I get it. he's he's a ninja warrior and he's like the buffest thirteen year old you're ever gonna meet. Oh, Damien, yes. Yeah. Yeah, Damien, Damien. Okay, Rob, just stick to his name. <laughs> I, I don't, I'm not intimidated by these people. You mm. know, it's like I'm not, I don't get the weight of this, even though they're apparently fighting over lava, which, you know, I mean, granted, it's a it's a comic book, so yes, lava is a lot, it, <laughs> physics. <laughs> anyway, they do a nice little fight. Uh, Damien basically takes out Mara, and then he's like, I would kill her, but I won't. But uh, there, I'm the champion. Call me the winner. And Mara's like, uh, dude, this was to the death. I'm sorry you missed that point. And stabs him in the back. Um, you know, what's funniest to me about this is that clearly, like, um, uh, Raven and Starfire are, like, grown women. Which makes me wonder, if we get, like, a whole Starfire thing, I mean, it's really going to make that Teen Titans go of unrequited love be really obvious. <laughs> With you know uh, Damien and Starfire, it's like Starfire. With it, you know I'm. Huh? I want to love you. It's like you're a very small child, and I do not date the children. Um, huh? Anyway, so of course Damien is not dead. What does he feel? He is only mostly dead. Okay. Uh, the I have even forgotten what they're called now. But Mara's team basically drops him there. And a bat flies in because you know symbology um and you know one of them um i want to say the weather wizard guy maybe the stone guy says you know you know oh um you know they're all like you know we don't get to have our targets we don't get our graduation you know um that's kind of sucky and you know he really was the better leader he died for his pe- people what has mar ever done for us so you get the whole dissension coming up and then we see that you know the they have to keep uh, Damien alive because they have to drink his blood at the ceremony freshly, you know, because they're super villains. And you know, killing an enemy too quickly that would be bad. Uh, <laughs> Teen Titans burst in and boom, get a very impressive look of all the all the real Teen Titans. Who say they are your friends to Damien. Um, you know, for all my complaining, it's still a good book. It's going to get to five. It's going to get to five. I'm not going to lie. Um, but I want this story resolved. It's like, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and for what it's worth, like Ra's al Ghul being just like completely sociopathically absent from the idea that he's making children fight to the death. Um you're like, not cool, Roz. I mean, really, man. It's like, dude, these are children. And it's like, well, you know, they'll fight to the death for my amusement. And he's just like chuckling, like, you know, he's chuckling like a freaking idiot. You know, that's the thing. It's like, not even like he's being grave about it. It's like, you know, this is what must be. Only one may lead. And, you know, I take no pleasure in this at all. He's like, oh, ho, 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 ho. children murdering each other. What a delight. Ha, ha, ha. And it's like, dude, you're really unsympathetic here. Um, <laughs> you know, so yeah. Um, yeah, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give it uh I'm gonna give it um uh three Poughkeepsie offices of the League of Assassins out of uh, five. It was a good book. I, I I'm gonna buy it again, I'm gonna buy number five. So three out of five? Out of five, yeah, it's all good. Right. I mean it's good, it's dramatic, it's well written. It really has all these good things about it for a comic book. It has some flaws, but every book has a flaw. But that's why they don't get four and five. You know, a book that you know to get four and five. You know, three it means it was good enough to read. You mm-hmm. know, you start going below three, and then it's like, you know what, dude, you really were not a good book. You are not coming back next week. You know, mm-hmm. um, you know, once you get past three, it starts to drop off precipitously. But I still like it. I still like the voice. I love the Teen Titans go kind of wink, wink at me. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, I, people still have to deal with this fact that, you know, when you have like people of various teenagers, you really have, I mean, 
I don't know. You, you, you have to work on that art because of, and, and granted, I mean, for what it's worth, making Damien look smaller than everyone else emphasizes that he is the youngest, but then you have to realize that that just also makes it clear that, oh, this is not a guy who should be a superhero. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, you're not superhero material, little buddy. Love you, but you're tiny. Um, okay. So that's that, yeah. But but uh, three Poughkeepsie offices out of five. All right. So uh, thank you, Charlie, for your review. And if people want to talk to you about this or uh, a lot of Marvel stuff, where can they get a hold of you? They can always write to me at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word, at gmail.com. If you don't know how to spell it, look up my other podcast with Phil. Super Connectivity over on the Nuff, Nuff, uh, said feed. Likewise, if you'd like to follow me on the Twitter where I live tweet Legends of Tomorrow and uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and the Incredible Hulk, you can do so at Charlie Esser. That's C H R L I E E S S E R. Look for the two E's in the middle for quality. All right. Uh, come back next week, everyone, uh, and join me, Lilith, and Charlie for more fun and games. But until then, remember. Team Titans number five is going to make the Titans great again.